Hey, what's happening, guys? What I've got in this box is something pretty cool from Banggood. Now, our friends at Banggood sent this item to us free of charge for our consideration, and I'm happy about that because this is something that I have been wanting for a couple of months. Ever since I got my amateur radio license. Now, if you're not into amateur radio or ham radio, don't worry. This isn't so much radio related as it is radio adjacent. So what we've got here, and you already saw it on the box, right? This is the MR300 antenna analyzer. And this is going to tell us some very important things that we need to know in order to set up an antenna. But first, before we get into this, let's talk a little bit about an antenna. All right, we're not going to get into the whole antenna theory and all that. Just basically hit it so you guys can understand if you're not familiar with radio stuff. Any type of conductor can be an antenna. Let's say, for instance, this is a piece of 18 AWG solid core wire. And let's say that it is 72 inches long. That's our antenna. Well, it's half of an antenna. But this part here is our radiator. This is the part that radiates the RF energy and also absorbs RF energy. Now, generally, there's some sort of an insulator here and then some sort of a ground plane system that is the other half of the antenna. But this part here is the part that radiates. Now, we need to know a few things about how the antenna works in order to effectively use it. We need to know at what frequency, frequency, good Lord, Paul, is it resonant? And that simply means at what frequency is it the most efficient? Then we also need to know what its impedance is. And what is impedance? Impedance is basically the AC form of resistance. We'll call it effective resistance to AC. That kind of simplifies it, but it gives you all you really need to know for this point. And we also need to know the reactance. And that is the non resistance component of inductance in AC, because everything we're dealing with here is AC, not DC. In DC, we have resistance, which is just a measure of the degree to which a conductor opposes an electrical current. Now, most radios and I'm going to say most because I'm sure that there is an exception to the rule out there. Most radios have an impedance of 50 ohms. So we need to match that impedance with not just our antenna, but also the line that feeds the antenna back to our radio. Our radio is looking for 50 ohms, and we need this entire system to also be 50 ohms 
to be the most efficient. If it's not, then we start having a problem with something called SWR, standing wave ratio. And the standing wave ratio is simply a measure of impedance mismatch. What we want to see is a standing wave ratio of 1 to 1. That's perfect. That means radio 50 ohms, antenna plus feed line 50 ohms. Now also acceptable is 1.5 to 1 and even 2 to 1. Those are all acceptable. When you start getting up to 3 to 1 and above, then you have a problem. And you can adjust that through various means, including the length of the feed line, the length of the radiator. You can also use antenna tuners to adjust it. But we need to have a measurement of where we're at. And that's where an antenna analyzer comes into play. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different things that affect an antenna, you know that for us, an ideal antenna is going to have uh, 50 ohms impedance, zero reactance, and an SWR of 1 to 1. Now, in the real world, you're never going to get all those things. But we want to be as close as we possibly can. So I've taken one of my two outside antennas. In this case, it's an end-fed long wire. And we're going to hook it up to the antenna analyzer here. And then we'll turn it on. And we'll see where that antenna stands. Now, the first thing that we're going to have to do is change the band. That's the 20 meter band. My antenna is in the 40 meter band, so we need to be in the 7 megahertz region. There we go. And now, when we look at this, we see an impedance on that antenna of 169 ohms and an SWR of 10. Now, let me just make sure. Okay, now we're better. I had the antenna tuner on, now the antenna tuner is in bypass. So this is the actual impedance. Now if we go to mode, you can see our impedance as a complex number. Yeah, we don't have time to get into complex numbers today. We see the capacitance that the antenna is showing and the inductance. And we see that our SWR is greater than 10. So what we can do now is we can press the scan button to find out exactly at what frequency that antenna is resonant. So once it completes the scan here, we will know. So at 7.570 the antenna shows a standing wave ratio of 1.65, which is good, and an impedance of 824 ohms, which is not good at all. And if we come down here into the range, let's go to about 7.2. This is right, right about in the middle of the 40 meter range you can see our SWR is greater than 10 and our impedance is 2000 ohms no es bueno so now I'm going to turn on the antenna tuner and you can see we have an SWR of greater than 10 and our inductance is down to 163 ohms and if I adjust the antenna tuner, see if we can get anywhere here. Very touchy. So 
still adjusting. All right, hang with me a second here. And we'll see if we can get her adjusted. That's just a little timeout feature. All right, what can we get here? Doesn't seem like we can get much, does it? Need to get that SWR down. All right, I'm going to see if I can adjust this thing, and we'll be back. Okay, after a whole bunch of tweaking, you can see we've got our SWR down to about 3.2. That's as low as it'll go. And an impedance of around 80. This thing's jumping all over the place. So that tells me that in order to make this antenna really resonant on the 40 meter uh, frequencies, I need to change the length of the antenna. And that's something I couldn't tell before I had this. So this does become a really useful device. Now, just for fun, let's change band again to the 20 meter band. And we'll see where this thing is resonant on the 20 meter band. It might not be resonant at all, but we'll find out. The 20 meter band covers from 14.0 to 14.35. All right, where are we at? Oh, 16.850. So that's uh, like somewhere between the 20 and the 17 meter band. So. This antenna definitely needs to have its length changed. Now let's look inside and see what makes this baby tick. All right, I removed the eight little pan head screws at the top and bottom, and the bottom cover comes off very cleanly. Now up here, all we really have is the um, LCD display and the buttons. And then there's a spot there where you could add a Bluetooth uh, module if you wanted. So if we come in here and we look at some of these components, these three up here are voltage regulators. Then we have this um, analog devices chip, the 809851, right here. And that's a DDS DAC synthesizer. Then over here we have this chip which I really had to look up. I, hadn't, I didn't know about it before. This is the Cypress CY829466. This is a PSOC programmable system on a chip. It's an MHC processor up to 24 megahertz, two 8x8 32-bit accumulators, low speed, high power. And then down here, we have the FTDI uh, 232R chip. So that's, that's a pretty good, you know, look at the inside of what's in there. There's our USB port for attaching to the computer or to a uh, USB on the go on your phone. It'll work both ways. And turn this antenna analyzer into something a little more potent, like, for instance, a vector network analyzer, which this certainly has the capability to be. And... If you're familiar with this kind of tech at all, you notice at the beginning this thing popped up, it said Sark 100, but this flavor of it is labeled as the um, MR300. Well, they're all about the same. Nothing new under the sun, as the saying goes. So they use the same chipset, they have the same functions, and they're pretty much going to be interchangeable. Did I put that on wrong? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Oopsies. Anyway, that's going to be it for this little review and show how it works. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a very useful, I, 
I hate to say necessary. It's not necessary. You can survive without an antenna analyzer. But for the last two months, I thought I was right on with my antenna tuner. I was getting down there around, you know, 1.5 to 1 SWR on my high frequency rig. But when you put this guy on there, you can see that it's a little bit off. So what that tells me is I need to change the length of my antennas to bring it more into tune. And that's not hard to do. So that's something I'm going to do. And that means it's going to take less work from the antenna tuner. Anyway, big thanks to you guys for watching and a big thanks to all the patrons and a big thanks to Banggood for sending this out to us. I'll put a link to it down below. Very affordable. So if you have anything, feel free to comment, share, whatever. That's it. I'm out. Peace.